All right, morning. Let's see how this goes. Oh, I gotta love that morning coffee. All right, so we are now on to talking about and implementing validation layers. I'm actually gonna see if I can bump that up a bit. It might be easier to read. Okay, what are validation layers? So to summarize this bit, um, Vulkan doesn't do a huge amount of checks at runtime, um, or even a huge amount of compile time. It kind of relies on you to do the checks yourself. Uh, with, with that lack of checks, there's quite the performance improvement, apparently. So uh, you kind of on your own, but you can hook into a lot of the Vulkan functions and provide sort of runtime validation, uh, sorry, compile and runtime validation checks yourself. So you, you just do like this example says right here. You basically define your own create instance kind of function or any other types of functions. You do your validation within that and then you call the real VK create instance for reals this time. Uh, that's useful for things like logging every call and its parameters, the standard output, tracing Vulkan calls to do profiling, uh, tracking creation and destruction of objects for memory leaks uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And the cool thing is you can turn these off for production builds or just regular builds. Production builds, I suppose. It's not a web app. Uh, but if you have debug mode on or you're building for debug, you keep them turned on so you get all these extra validations which should catch all the bugs before you push. Fingers crossed. Okay, so that's an example, kind of nice. And these layers are can be freely stacked to include all the debugging functionality that you are interested in. That's cool. Uh, there's already a lot of built-in ones from Luna G's SDK, and they're all open source, so we can contribute if we want to. Nice. Uh, what else we got? Here we go. Da -da -da. Um. There were formerly two different types of validation layers in Vulkan, instance and device specific validation. Okay, that's no longer the case. Well, simply specify the blah, blah, blah. All right, using validation layers, this is the bit we care about. In this section, we'll see how to enable the standard diagnostics layers provided by the Vulkan SDK. Just like extensions, validation layers need to be enabled by specifying their name. Okay, so it's a similar pattern that we've been playing with. <clears throat> All of the useful standard validation is bundled into a layer included in the SDK that is known as VK Layer Kronos Validation. Let's first add two configuration variables to the program to specify the layers to enable and whether, I mean, which layers to enable and whether to enable them or not. Ah, <clears throat> excuse me. This N debug, uh, they say it's part of C++, but it might also be part of a regular C. So let's use that. Uh, it's probably more of a top level thing. Actually, it's below that. Okay, we've got our width and height as defined there. They put it below, so let's just follow them. Const. Oh. Const char star of validation layers is equal to VK layer on us validation different cases interesting okay oh, sometimes that repeat function really buggers things up whenever we start the OS it just kind of doesn't like to retain its repeater got some machine called shortcuts how do you find that where is it again No, it's not shortcuts. Where is it? I don't remember. Huh. I'm sure it was in keyboard. Wait, we need to... Nah. Uh, I'll just pause it so you don't have to watch me fumble around here. We're back. Turns out it's inaccessibility. Who would have thunk it? Alright. Ooh. 
got my repeater keys going. All right, here we are. So those are the validation layers. I think because they've got a vector which contains const char, const, can't speak. Anyway, const char star, this is what I need in C. Quiet bird. And because I already know the pattern, we're going to need the number of these validation layers. So let's do another const of uh, u32 validation layer count equal to one, because we know there's one, just one down here. All right. And then this thing of, oh, I'll just copy it rather than faffing around. Okay, so if it's not debug, which is what the n in n debug means, confusingly, uh, the validation layers, the enable validation layers variable is false. Otherwise, it's true. So we can do that at compile time, which is kind of nice. Then we'll add a new function of check validation layer support. Uh, that's probably going to return a boolean. Yes, there you go. So let's create the function prototype. Void, no, no, void, I've just said, I've literally just said. <laughs> it's gonna take in probably nothing. Let's just call it void for now. It may take in something else. And let's define it uh, down the bottom somewhere. Okay. So we have another U32 of layer count. Is that what we did? No. Let me do VK enumerate instance layer properties. Passing in the pointer to our layer count. And then null. Okay. Then we have to create an array for the available layers. So again, same kind of thing. We have to do our malloc. And I've just noticed we are not freeing that. Okay, so we shall have to free that. Let me get down here. Free. I vaguely remember reading a really good pattern to do this in a book, maybe, maybe it was that effective C book or maybe it was something else. Oops. Free extensions. So that frees up the memory that we allocated on the heap within this function here. Otherwise, when this function returns or even if it errors out, I mean, the OS is likely at the error out bit to clean up any resources that we allocate to the heap, but I am not 100% sure. Squeaky foot. Oh, it's like, it's not guaranteed. So we probably, we probably want to be a bit more safe about it. With that in mind, let's look at, no, we haven't used Malik yet anywhere else. Cool, so that's all freed up. And we need to do the same kind of thing again. These are going to be structs of VK layer properties, lowercase k, yep. VK layer properties, pointer of available, did I just copy that? I did, available layers. And we are gonna do casting, explicit casting again. I think that's what it's called. Malloc size of, man alive, that multiplied by the layer count. So that will give us the space available that we need. And then we can call this VK function again and pass in our available layers. So that should update our layers. Why are we just returning false? Okay. Uh, it's usually just identical to that of, yep. Yeah, okay, we kind of figured that. It's a nice, easy pattern to remember. Provide the number, get the number. Provide the allocated array, update the allocated array. Cool beans. And again, let us not forget to free this once we're done with it. Oh, 
always clean up after yourself, folks. Awesome. Next, we are checking if all the layers and validation layers exist in the available layers list. You may need to include C string I to do string compare. We've already got it. Someone interesting that they didn't do that earlier. Maybe they did. Okay, so now we'll do. Have we done this kind of thing before? Yeah, this is basically this pattern again. In which case, hello, copy and pasta. All right, but different names. And we have to also create a uh, U32 to say found or what is it? Um, yeah, found validation layers equal to zero. And then we'll update that in here. Okay. So we're going to loop through the validation layers first. Oh, let's lay a count. And it will be validation layers. Ooh, music's kind of struggle town. Yeah, that's really struggling. Validation layers, uh, and then it's the available layers count. Oh, it's actually just called layer count. All right, the available layer is J, and it is called layer name. Let's just quickly take a look at what that actually is. Take a look at the definition of this. Enumerate instance layer properties. That's what we're doing. Uh, that particular struct. Yep, layer name, and it is an array. Okay, similar to what we had before. So I think I think that might work. That's clever. Don't know why I didn't do break earlier in this one. That might have been useful. So then we don't need to keep looping through to find nothing, nothing at all. All right, so then we will be returning if found validation layers equals the same as um, we, uh, We'll do this nested for loop stupidly in case we happen to add more validation layers. Don't really like doing that, but. Heh, there you go. Or oh, actually, what they're doing is probably a slightly better pattern. Where's my mouse gone? I have no mouse. Any of these batteries work? They don't. It's usually useful to put them in the right way. All right, now I'm gonna have to learn how to edit some stuff. Grand. All right, yeah, they have this thing of found internally, and if it's not found, then they exit out early. That might be pretty cool. So let's just do that internal thing of, hey, cool, they are found, it's false. And then we say, oh, hey, layer found equals true. Otherwise, return false. But free, you're flipping. There is. Oh, 
Well, it's a bit go to I don't... Uh, no, I don't like that. I don't know if I like that at all. I mean, it's on program startup. The efficiency of that actually is somewhat important. All right, let's just go with that then. Otherwise, we're just going to return true and free up our memory as well. And we shouldn't be able to double free because we've already exited if we're doing this free. But we have to do. If layer not found, then return false. Yep, that makes sense. Let's uh, let's try that and see see how it goes. And I'll kill this and this. So in each iteration of the validation layer count, we say was this layer found? If it is, go true and then break and then go for the next validation layer. Yeah, I like that pattern a bit more actually. Nice one, tutorial. You've really opened my eyes to <laughs> how to make this easier and see. So in this particular one, let's also ditch our found and just have a bool of bool extension found. Ooh, found. It's false initially. And then in here we would actually say, hey, did you found equals true? And then outside of that folder we we'll go if extension is not found, return etern false. Uh, and then we can just go get out of here. I'm just going to check if the compiles. Uh, I'm not even in the right directory. Project C, C engine. It does compile and does it run. It misses extension support. Hmm. Oh, I also need to return false. No, return true. There you go. Build and game. There you go. Oh, yeah, quite like that. One less variable hanging around, and this one's only scoped to within this full loop, and then it gets pushed out. Excellent. Okay. Quickly, because we haven't got long before I have to start work. Uh, what else are we doing? Done our checks, blah, blah, blah. Now we need to do, we can now use this function in the create instance. Excellent. That music is dying, what's going on? Okay, in the create instance function, we want to do an if of, if enable validation layers, and this check fails, then we probably want to do an error. Yep, we do. Validation layers requested, but not available. Nice. Print F into standard output to say validation layers requested, but not found or not available. And then go, hey man, exit yo. <laughs> exit with, I'm gonna have to come back in another video and do a lot of cleaning up of these things. But that'd be quite fun because it'll make our code a bit easier to read and everyone loves that. Okay, now we're on the program in debug mode, which is what I always do. Cool. Nice. Okay, final thing. Oh, we'll get the message callbacks in the, the next one. Uh, finally, modify the VK instance create info struct initialization to include the validation layer names and if they are available. Okay, so again, we want to do our if validation layers is on in the create info struct enabled layer count. Ah, here we go. Ooh, enabled layer count. 
right. If that is on, neighbor layer count is not going to be zero. It's going to be our validation layer count. Yep, and then we also have to add, add another property of pointer to pointer of enabled layer names. Enabled layer names, and it's validation layers. Excellent. If check was successful, VK should create, should never return VK error not present. But you should run the program to make sure. I shall run the program to make sure. And it doesn't like my token. Oh. What's that? 9132. Oh. I need to do that. Save the file. Yes, save the file. Don't exit. There you go. Boom, works, lovely. We've now added a validation layer or added support for our validation layers. And the next thing is gonna be this message callback, but we shall get to that in the next one. So let's quickly commit this. Git add, well actually, state this first. Git add main and triple add. Git commit um, added or adds validation layer support. Git push. And that is awesome. Great. Hope that was somewhat useful. Cleaned up a little bit of our malloc allocations and uh, improved these. Well, that existing for loop. Uh, where is it? Somewhere else. Up here. And then also a little bit extra stuff. So cool, pretty, pretty good day. Catch you next time.